Thank you for joining me on this episode of Highway Spec. My name is Trent. We are going to spec out some of the latest and greatest cars like we do three times a week. And today we are going to do another new Toyota. Just a couple weeks ago, we did the brand new Prius, as you can see on the screen right here. But today we are going to go after a much larger vehicle, one that is still a hybrid, but definitely not on the same level of fuel efficiency. That is the brand new 2023 Toyota Sequoia. Okay, so the new Sequoia has an all new hybrid max motor that they're putting out throughout the lineup. It's available in the Tundra. It is standard on the Sequoia and it produces 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque, which is not bad. Uh, not bad. <laughs> but because it is a hybrid, it still gets over 20 miles per gallon, which given the size of the vehicle is pretty significant up to 9,500 pounds of towing capacity. These are all very big numbers for the class. It actually has a uh, 14 inch screen available as well, which is again, class leading at this point in time before it, the whole thing just becomes one giant screen, right? Well, I'm super excited for this vehicle. There are some drawbacks to the new Sequoia. The third row space is not great. There is a sliding third row, so it can give you some more cargo space or more leg room. But if you want the same kind of cargo space that you used to have in the Sequoia, you got pretty much no room in the third row, which is kind of disappointing. But it is a smoother riding vehicle. It is going to be much more powerful and more fuel efficient. So we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna build one out and see what we come up with. All right, so the Sequoia starts out at $58,365, and that's no small amount of money, you know, granted, compared to an, an equivalent, say, Tahoe or something like that. It is going to be less expensive. However, the prices jump up pretty quickly, as you can see down here. Limited starts at 64 all the way up to the capstone at $75,365. Mm, that's that's a decent amount of money, especially given that it's a Toyota and its interior is definitely not at the same level of some of its competitors. It's much improved compared to where it used to be, but that model had been around since 2008, I think. Uh, so it's it was definitely long in the tooth, and even at 2008 level, it wasn't class leading in its interior. So unfortunately, that's the way Toyota does things. So this interior. Still not class leading now, but it's uh, definitely not going to be class leading again, given that it'll be on the market for a really long time. Does have offer eight passenger seating, does have a unique load floor back there. The SR5 comes with a smaller screen, obviously cloth seats, things like that. So personally, I'd like to stay away from the SR5. Uh, I, we can take a look at the limited model here does give you that 14 inch screen. It does give you uh, the soft text seats, which are their faux leather. But if we go up to the platinum, you get the LED headlights, actual leather trimmed seats and a 360 camera. TRD Pro obviously is gonna be very off-road focused. You've got the 18 inch wheels instead of 20s with some more off-road friendly tires. You do have quite a bit of off-road accessories on it, the 2.5 inch Fox shocks, and some of Toyota's trick off-road things like their crawl control. And then from there, you've got the capstone, which has all the things on it, the nicer leather, uh, 22 inch wheels on that one. But personally, I, I don't think I can go with the capstone. I think the sweet spot's gonna be somewhere in here. I do like the TRD Pro. I think the TRD Pro will serve its purpose for a lot of people. But for me, this is definitely going to be more on-road fo focused. It would be something that would see dirt trails to go camping. So I think we're gonna start with the limited here which Limited used to be a top trim, and for some automakers it still is, but uh, now it's the mid trim. So adding the four wheel drive, that would definitely be something I would do. That takes us up to 67,765. 
Let's take a look at the outside here as we go to pick colors. Now, there are a lot of great color options. You've got this red, black for some reason, and it keeps dropping down when I click a picture or click a color rather, magnetic gray. Green is super popular right now, but I think it's more of a fad. I don't, I, I don't think it'll last very long. Lunar Rock has to have the TRD off-road package, but honestly, this is a color, if you see it in person, I absolutely love it. Like I said, this is more on-road focused. I don't really care for all the off-road stuff, but if it means that I have to do it for the Lunar Rock, then I will definitely do that. At the Windchill Pearl and a basic white ice cap. There we go. So definitely gonna go with the Lunar Rock. I think that's the most attractive color of those options. It does give you different wheels being the TRD off-road package. And then it looks like you've got a gray or black interior option. And personally, I would go with the gray because we don't have ventilated seats in this trim level and the lighter interior, it's going to be cooler. Cool. All right, so this is where it gets interesting. Toyota doesn't let you just individually select options. You have to get a package. And as you can see, there are 23 packages to choose from to try and get this right. So. I do like the power tow mirrors because it will see some towing. Uh, I do like the TRD off-road package just for the fact that it gets us that lunar rock. So you can see it goes with 18 inch wheels, badging, Bilstein shocks, skid plate, um, red front axle drive shafts, okay. Uh, crawl control, multi-terrain select and downhill assist control, cool. So for $470, yeah, sure. I do want the panoramic moonroof as well, though. Uh, the JBL audio, I'm, I'm not super keen on. So this will give us the tow mirrors plus the off-road package. This gives us the tow mirrors and the panoramic, but not the TRD off-road package. So I gotta find somewhere in here that allows us to have the TRD off-road package and the panoramic moonroof and the tow mirrors, which I am not seeing so far. This is where it gets a little, little crazy. Auto leveling, auto leveling headlamps, but not quite what we're looking for. Power tow mirrors, but no TRD off-road. No TRD off-road. Man, we are striking out here. Dad, this is ridiculous. It's panoramic moonroof and the TRD off-road package, but no power tow mirrors. There we go. We have to pick option number 23 out of 23. JBL Premium Audio, Auto Leveling Headlamps, Power Tow Mirrors, which is what I want, and the TRD Off-Road Package. Now I need to make sure, does that actually have the Panoramic Moonroof? Does it not have that either? Panoramic Roof, there we go. That's the one we need. $2,375 for that package. More than I th was thinking it would be. $68,955 now is what we're looking at. But I don't think this is going to be a bad place to be. And then we get to the accessories. So we're just under $70,000. Not bad. Uh, considering the tech that it has, the, the great motor that it has. Um, I'm not going to select like the floor liners and things like that. We can get those later. Uh, ones that I typically do select those, the door edge guards. I do think those are very valuable. Gotta go with the black emblems with that lunar rock look. I would definitely black out the chrome trim there. Dash cam is very handy to have. And then paint protection film. And I think that's about, well, I, I do want the roof crossbars so we can mount some things on the roof. Some of these other things. You've already got a skid plate on this model. Not gonna worry about that. So that brings us to our final tally. $71,098 is how I would spec out a 2023 Toyota Sequoia limited model. Does have that lunar rock, which requires the TRD off-road package, panoramic moonroof, and it comes with some other things that I didn't care as much about. The JBL Premium Audio, I did want the power tow mirrors, and then we added a few accessories there at the top. Uh, so $72,693 with the delivery processing and handling fee. 
more than I would have expected it to be, given that it's not very high in the trim level. It's very much a lower end vehicle in terms of where it is on the hierarchy of Sequoias. So that's not saying it's a low end vehicle for sure. Oh, don't get it twisted. But that is my build. What do you think of that build? What would you do differently? How would you spec out your 23 Sequoia? But if you made it this far, first of all, I want to say thank you for joining me on this video. I also ask that you like the video, consider subscribing, clicking the bell notifications, all the things the YouTube algorithm loves. So they push this video out to more people so I can make more videos for people like you. So thank you again for joining me. I will catch you on the next one.